So, we're ready now for the turtle hermit training? Yes! Are you boys sure that you're prepared for my rigorous training schedule? Yes, sir! If they get themselves in gear, they'll be ready for the World Martial Arts Tournament. Oh, that's only eight months from today. teaching us fighting moves. Now don't get jumpy. There are certain basics you need before learning martial arts and you boys aren't there yet. <laughs> Now I will be delighted to teach you the secrets of martial arts just as soon as you're strong enough to move this rock. Friction is a tricky thing, not as easy as you may think. I have an object on a horizontal surface. The object has a mass m, gravitational force mg. The y direction is going to be the x direction. There must be a force pushing upwards from the surface to cancel out mg because there's no acceleration in the y direction. We normally call that the normal force because it's normal to this surface and it must be the same as mg, otherwise there would be an acceleration in the y direction. Now, I am going to push on this object with a force, force Walter Lewis. And we know that the object in the beginning will not start accelerating. Why is that? That's only possible because there is a frictional force which adjusts itself to exactly counter my force. 
I push harder, and harder, and harder, and there comes a time that I win. And the object begins to accelerate. It means that the frictional force, which is growing all the time as I push harder, reaches a maximum value which it cannot exceed. And that maximum value that the friction can achieve, this is an experimental fact, is what's called the friction coefficient mu, which has no dimension, times this normal force. We make a distinction between static friction coefficient and kinetic. This is to break it loose, to get it going. This is to keep it going when it already has a certain velocity. Static is always larger than kinetic. The reasons that are quite obvious. It's a little harder to break it loose once it's going. And you see that mu of s equals dependent alpha. That easy to measure. Increase the tilt, we will do that later until it starts to slip. And then, at that critical angle that it starts to slip, you have a value for mu of s, for the static friction coefficient. It is very non intuitive that this friction coefficient is completely independent of the mass. The mass has disappeared. Think about it, it's very non intuitive. If you double the mass, the angle would be the same, given the fact that you have the same kind of object. The friction coefficient only depends on the materials that you have, the materials that are rubbing over each other. It's also independent of the surface area that is in contact with this incline, which is equally non-intuitive. It's very non-intuitive. But we will see that that's quite accurate within the uncertainties that we can measure it. If you have a a car and you park your car, you throw it on the brakes and you put it at an angle and you increase the angle of the slope, the friction coefficient for rubber on concrete is about 1, so the tangent is 1, so the angle is about 45 degrees. So if the road were 45 degrees, the car would start to slide. Independent of the mass of the car, no matter whether it's a truck or whether it is a small car, independent of the width of the tires, doesn't enter into it though you may think it does, they would both start to slide at the same angle, given the fact, of course, the same road and the same kind of rubber. For the next few months, you'll be doing the exact same training schedule as today. But you'll be wearing these stylish 50-pound turtle shells.
much as Goku did. This tournament is only another step in your training. It's an introduction, and that's the lowdown. There's no point teaching you special moves until you get the fighting experience. So keep training the same. But we're going to make it a little harder. Now you'll be wearing heavier turtle shells. Is it over? Not to the fish jumps. It's over.